Impact opened with a shot of Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff in a limousine driving down the road. Bischoff was on his phone texting or whatever and said, somebody's plane was landing, and they were talking about it, whatever this new acquisition was, and Hogan said, all of the big fish were coming to the pond. Those were his exact words. So he was acknowledging that TNA is the small pond. They're number two, everyone. I don't know what was happening here. And yeah, I but, watched it twice. Somebody emailed me and said, um, what was going on here? And I don't know. Yeah. I have absolutely no idea. And if there was supposed to be a new acquisition, he did not appear on this show. No, they, they turned around. They turned around. They later. left him at the airport. He's apparently at the airport and will be there in 10 days. I realize I said that the spoilers were over, but now let me go back and see if I can even find out who the fuck this was supposed to even be. Go on. So Hogan end, uh, ended this little opening deal. He's saying he, tonight he was going to call out Sting. And again, in 2010, Hulk Hogan is going to call out Sting in the main event. So we had Mike Tanay reading the announcement of moving back to Thursdays. Based on the feedback that we have been receiving, TNA has listened to the fans and is moving Impact back home to Thursday nights right here on Spike TV beginning May the 13th. And I think that's about the best way they could have handled this. Just pretend there's a massive fan backlash saying boo Monday nights, but what can you do? They also plugged the TNA reaction show, said Spike could pick that up. So they were discussing the Sting Hogan showdown when Flair's music hit, and who should come out but Black Machismo in a suit and sunglasses, holding up four fingers, one of which had a big old ring on it. And he did an amazing Ric Flair impression. If you close your eyes, it sounded just like him. I actually thought maybe they were playing Ric Flair sound bites over the house mic and he was merely lip syncing, but no, he did a five-star Ric Flair impression for a while. The fans were going crazy for this. He did all the catchphrases, tore off his jacket, dropped a knee on it. Uh, like I said, the people were going crazy. Some were going crazy chanting, we want Ric, but they were all going crazy. So eventually, eventually the real Ric Flair came out. The fans chanted double vision, which is the funniest chant in Impact Zone history. Flair was not happy. He told Lethal he was standing in front of God, and Lethal suddenly backed down, and he dropped the Ric Flair voice, spoke in his normal voice, and he meant no disrespect. People started to boo at that point, and then Lethal said Flair had earned the Hall of Fame ring and handed it back. said he meant no, meant no disrespect, but he always wanted to be the Nature Boy, even if it was just for two minutes. He was going to get this footage framed on his wall. Said it was the greatest moment of his life, and that back in Elizabeth, New Jersey, his mother was watching with a tear in her eye, knowing her son had made it, because he was standing in the ring with Ric Flair. And people booed when he started being Jay Lethal instead of Ric Flair, and then by the end of this, they all cheered, and it was a great promo. So Flair thanked him for returning the ring, but was still mad. It said that did not dig him out of the hole he was in. He slapped him a few times until Lethal started to fight back. They uh, were having a brawl, and uh, Lethal got the better of it and actually put Flair in the figure four until AJ Styles and Beer Money and Desmond Wolf Wolf ran down to make the save, and then Abyss waddled out to help. Then Team 3D came out, and then RVD came down with a chair, cleared the ring, went to commercial, and I thought, that was a great segment right there. Unfortunately, after commercial. I have absolutely no idea what's going on in these TNA spoilers. Shocking. (laughs) I I have no idea! What the fuck is happening? Everyone, who cares about teenage spoilers? I'm just going to read them. If you don't like it, fast forward. I can't fathom anybody caring. Let me try and figure all this out here. First off, it does not appear that this big acquisition even appeared on this program. All right. That's always good. Maybe when they didn't pick over the airport, he got back in the plane and went home. Apparently, there was some sort of incident with something... There was an assailant. That's great news. Chrissy Hemming in the back tries to get a word with Pat Kenny about a possible assailant. Kenny says he can't believe what he hears and leaves. And then, I guess later, something like the police won't allow them to release the name of somebody who did something. Who presumably is the guy they picked up at the airport. Oh, here we go. They go to the back, and Christy Hemi says, if the assailant is true, it will be major news. Police aren't allowing the name to be released. What? I don't know. So I guess the guy... Ga- so... <laughs> Hogan and Bishop are going to pick this guy up at the airport, and now he's running wild and, and doing something that the police are required to uh, well, investigate. They didn't pick him up, so he is taking out people from TNA one by one. What in God's name is going on? Do we know who sent these in? 
No, I just am reading them off our board. Because they showed footage of Chelsea in the back crying while a major scene was going down. Security and officials trying to find out what's going on. So we don't even know what happened. Just something happened involving an assailant that they can't release the name. There's always the chance that there's a major communication, major communication gap between the reporter and ourselves as well. Oh, really? You think so? You don't think this is just the show doesn't make no sense? I'm just Occam's saying. razor here. Also, this one here. Um, so, of course, they're doing the poll. And it says, TNA has a poll to see the top ten rankings to see who RVD would face. Jeff Hardy is the next on the list after Desmond Wolf. So, apparently, they're going by the first poll that they did where Desmond won and Jeff Hardy came in number two. Which begs the question, why on TNAWrestling.com right now are they doing yet another poll? Is this because for the show in charge. after this week airs? What's happening? And then uh, then we've got whatever happens in the main event, which is, uh, I guess we'll have to figure out if they actually changed the title three days before the pay-per-view, which uh, nobody who sent in these things seems to know. I guess we'll find out. Excellent. But, uh, yeah, this show looks like it sucks. Where were you on this thing? Well, I just finished. Uh, RVD came out with his chair to clear the ring and save the faces. They went to commercial. And I thought that was a great segment there that just oh, ended. Oh, and it kept going forever? And it kept going. Yeah. They brawled. Our, they came out the commercial. Everyone was still just out there. They just hung, they hung out for five minutes during the commercial break. RVD dared Flair and his crew to come back, so they did. They brawled in the ring. They brawled up the aisleway. They brawled on the floor. They brawled on the stage. It went forever. Oh, God. Somewhere in here, Hogan finally arrived. And uh, he walked out. The heels ran at him one at a time. And he would block one punch and hit a punch. And they would be done, you know, they would be done for. And they would go to the floor. And this was a, it was Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling, done by the real Hogan in 2010. And we're supposed to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Didn't work. Yeah, this segment, uh, it went too long. Hogan beating up everybody and having him bump all over the place for him was, was kind of stupid. Yes, and then after Hogan came out, they went to commercial and came back, and the brawl was still going on. Yeah. Dumb. So Hogan booked a bunch of matches. They didn't change the title, by the way. We've determined that. They booked a bunch of matches. Desmond Wolf versus RVD. Uh, AJ versus Abyss in Monster's Ball was just reeks of desperation. Not, forget the fact they didn't explain what this was. Yeah. It's a weapons match between two main event level guys for free with no build on TV. Yes. That's what 0.5 will do to you. Oh, by the way, Jeff Hardy is all over the show, and he could be in jail when it airs. Excellent. <laughs> so, I love TNA. You, you know what's so sad? Is because they taped this, he's going to the clink. You know what I mean? That's the way TNA works. Yeah. yeah. They've, they've cursed Jeff Hardy by, by, by filming him... On their television show for next week, they've guaranteed he's going to prison. It's just the way it is. He should have known better. He should have said, "Take me off this show just in case," and then he would have been he would have got off scot free. By putting him on this show, they've guaranteed he's going to prison. Mm -hmm. Mark my words, everyone. So the last shot of the brawl breakup, I saw Al Snow on TV. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, the beautiful people did a promo backstage. I have no idea what they said, but their breasts looked amazing. We had Douglas Williams and Brian Kendrick versus the team of Ink Ink, which I just can't decide. They've loved it. They've loved it. It's much better than just calling them the Mohawk dudes or anything. It's more creative than anything I could could come up with. So you recall that Douglas Williams was the ex champ, but I mean, are they really incorporated? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe they've opened a tattoo parlor. I don't know. Doug, Doug Williams was the ex-champ, and he was stripped of the title due to Volcano, which was dumb. So, this was his first appearance on the show since being stripped of the title due to Volcano, and he's standing in the ring with no entrance wearing his belt. Well, because the belt was stuck in Europe, too. They didn't just take it from him when he walked in the door? No, he, he hit it. <laughs> he had in a Halliburton locked. I see. That's far from the dumbest thing on this show. Uh, you're right. So he said he had been stripped unfairly. He now had a team with this lunatic. Said Kazarian was not the real champ. If he wanted to be, he'd have to beat him at sacrifice. Otherwise, he'd just be a cheap imitation. So then they officially announced Ink Ink versus Matt Morgan and a partner of Hogan's choosing at the pay-per-view. 
Morgan came out to do commentary, demanded to know who his partner was going to be in seven days, which I didn't even pick up on. That in seven days will just be maybe he'll make the announcement during Raw. Yeah, the four-minute tag match, it was fun. I don't even know if I should say these things that I think sometimes. I was thinking of a tag team with Ink Ink and Orlando Jordan. Let's just move on. All right. Those people that get the joke will have a hearty laugh. Everyone else doesn't need to hear it. Okay. So, yes, they had a fun tag match. Uh, Jesse Neal pinned Kendrick with a spear. And then the heels were bickering until Samoa Joe came out and killed them both. To remind us all Inc. that the X Division Challenger, I suppose, and his tag team partner are dorks. And then Joe teased the promo, and then he walked away. So, Boras <laughs> tried to interview Ric Flair, but got kicked out of the dressing room. I so don't care about these shows anymore. I just sit here and try and think of funny things <laughs> about them. I have great difficulty paying attention these days. They're, they're on. I am usually doing laundry or something in the web or whatever. And I report on what... They had a good show you know, two weeks ago. It did. They had a good show. Thank they, God they learned something from that great show. A great show. show two weeks ago and a not bad show last week. And this show... Yeah, this was well, a show a lot where of it was like... Shows. Raw's, Raw's the same thing for me now. Well, think about that, like, they had a great show two weeks ago. And then, you know, they the week after it had already been taped. So it's like, okay, well, you had a great show. You had a, a pretty good show or an average show. So now here's your chance to, to do another live great show and another great tape show. And they give us a horrible live show and what appears to be an even worse tape show. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Clueless. Just so, clueless people. Poor Ash got kicked out of Ric Flair's dressing room, but then, then Flair left the door open, so we got to hear everything he said anyway. He gave his many brow beating, basically threatened them to all win their matches tonight or else he would find replacements for them. We had a... One of those uh, TNA reaction promos, I guess, where Hulk Hogan, just barely in character, said he thought coming to TNA would be easy, but there have been many problems. No shit. <laughs> you turned yourself down. I turned myself down there. And then Sting went awry. And then the segment ended. I have zero idea what the point of this was. I thought I didn't expect these problems when I signed. Well. You should have. That explains everything, Hulk. So Taz that explains and, everything. Taz and Tanae were running down stuff, promised Jeff Hardy the top of the hour, and they cut backstage where Ken Anderson was wearing a dress and beating up Pope. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be a frock, Vinny. I understand. I In hindsight, I know, but that's what it looked like, and I was just perplexed. Mm-hmm. And then he stole Pope's sunglasses. So he came out in his altar boy costume and the sunglasses, and he was spouting off a bunch of religious buzzwords until Jeff came out, as promised, at the top of the hour. Jeff said Pope would not be able to compete until after sacrifice. Okay. <laughs> he just knew, Vince. He just knew. He, it was a, it was, he it just was knew. Determined in the five minutes after the beating. He issued a challenge to Anderson. Anderson turned it down. So Jeff stripped him to humiliate him, revealing that Ken Anderson was wearing trunks that were about 1% smaller than his normal wrestling trunks anyway. I was shocked Orlando Jordan didn't run out at this point. I, I the man guess, had been defrocked and was wearing tiny pants. I, I guess I guess he's too small for Orlando. Mm-hmm. But he had uh, some... Stupid Did you hear Orlando's new catchphrase? It's our little secret. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get to that one. So, These fucking people. <laughs> so, yes, Jeff stripped him to his underwear and then used ventriloquism to make him accept the challenge. In TNA, this is legally binding... I have no idea what to make of this segment. It was just it, it was a wacky impact segment. They all just they roll off my back now. We had the beautiful people versus Tara, Sarita, and Taylor. I didn't even note here that the titles were on the line. All the belts were on the line. All the belts were on the line. Why I didn't, not? I didn't care enough to write that down. But why not? Why and what? Because I don't know. So the storyline here is that Tara was not getting along with the other knockouts. She was wrestling with. I can't believe it. Reality, everyone. We must have reality on our show. I can't believe that tag partners would not be getting along in TNA. That too, yes. Revolutionary concept. So Sarita tried to do Lucha with Velvet Sky. This was a bad idea. It was doomed to failure. Sarita ended up being pinned with a double DDT. That was it. They plugged the main event of Rob Van Dam and Desmond Wolf, and they put up the graphic with uh, you know the photos and their names and whatnot. They had the... Rob had the 
dumbest expression on his face. He looked like so much not a champion. And again, on this show, they just went with the first photo they took. Didn't bother redoing it. She had a Tara promo. She said nobody respected her now that she had no title. Challenged Madison for sacrifice. Christy Hemi pointed out that she had not won any matches, therefore was not deserving of a title shot. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind that the current champion won the match in a tag match, and the champion before her won the title in a box. Yes. So Tara said she was going to put her career on the line. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> title shot. <laughs> oh, no. Who cares? No one. Not a single, not a single earthling cares. <laughs> So, Beer Money wrestled Team 3D versus the Machine Guns in a three-way. A fun short match. Actually, it's very short. Uh, Bubba got a hot tag, and about 30 seconds later, the Outsiders hobbled in for the, for the DQ. Yeah. By the way, aren't there supposed to be no DQs in three-ways? <laughs> Not in TNA. Not in TNA, okay. So Vince, there can be DQs in cage matches in TNA. <laughs> Vince Russo can't figure out why that is ridiculous. So the, why not? He says. Why were, can't there be tag DQs in in cage matches? So they were all brawling. The uh, Team 3D. Let's see if I remember this right. The Outsiders were beating up Team 3D. Eric Young runs in with a stick, fights them off, and then his 3D with a stick. Yeah. Again. <laughs> Why? Why don't we just hit them with a stick? Because apparently they couldn't think of any other person that could be the third member of the band but with X-Pot gone. He ran down to help Holland Nash, and his first step was to stop them and tease attacking them. Why does everything have to be a swerve? Vince. All right. <laughs> That's the answer. Vince. Vince Russo. Yes. He doesn't understand anything. No. He's a terrible booker. He is awful. Have we ever mentioned that before? I think so. This guy's no good at booking, everyone. He really sucks at it. So, we have the Ozone with Orlando Jordan. <laughs> It'll be our little secret. It'll be our little secret. As one, he spotted off about a dozen catchphrases. That was one of them. It'll be our little secret. What does that even mean? He was being Orlando Jordan. We're talking about it. And they it's cut, edgy. They cut to the announce desk. Oh, the ratings this show's going to get. And Taz was frowning directly into the camera, and Mike Tanay was being Mike Tanay, and then Taz could not take it anymore and began to giggle. Yes. And I was going to demand an animated GIF, but thank God the board, the board came through this time and produced it within like an hour. Yeah. It's awesome. Point five after he spread mayonnaise all over himself. <laughs> How's that possible? Yeah. It's so edgy. Yes. Yeah. How did it not turn the ratings around immediately? So Orlando tried to interview a cardboard cutout of Rob Terry until the real Rob Terry came out and tore off his own head. Which is a neat trick. He tore, told Orlando not to make him come back, and then he turned around and stood there until Orlando hit a low blow and dropped some pretend furniture on him. It bounced off Rob Terry up into the air and into the camera, which was not destroyed. Always a good sign. When this is over. I thought... And that was stupid. And I thought a little more about it, and I thought, that may have been like a hall of, uh, like, Russell Crapp's Gooker of the Year award, and I just, it didn't even occur to me. I, I, my standards for this show are so low. <laughs> Something historically bad can happen, and I can just write it off as being another stupid impact segment. Yeah. So we had AJ Styles versus But we're this. talking about it, everybody. Yeah. It's, it's, we're talking about it. We had Water cooler. <laughs> so we're talking about it. I need to get a water cooler in here so we can talk about impact around it. We had AJ Styles versus Abyss. With every weapon under the sun available to their disposal, they had to use Chelsea for distraction for the finish. So they're hitting each other with stuff. And then Ric Flair brings Chelsea out in a trench coat and is ordering her to remove it. And she is saying no and crying. Did I miss... No, I have no idea what happened here. <laughs> Did I miss it made no months sense. of storylines where Abyss was pining for no, Chelsea? It made He's courting her? No sense. Did he bring her flowers and I missed it? Nope. Suddenly, Abyss, Abyss's world revolves around Chelsea, and AJ cut him off and hit him move into tax to win. He got tax in his hand for the stupid stuff. And then Chelsea took her coat off. She had a dress on. They celebrated. What this accomplished, I don't know. This is piss. <laughs> it is the Rob Van Dam Des- Rob Van Dam Desmond Wolf match. They had a fun match that Desmond Wolf lost clean in a minute. Way to go, Paul! 
That'll teach those people. This is what let's, happens. Go, let's go look at the TNA poll here while we're at it. All right. Let's see where everyone's at. You go ahead, and I'll I'll go to PollDaddy.com. Speaking of Orlando. No, that's what it's called. Oh, all right. I'm not making that up. So. They, listen to this. This is astounding. Now you have polls on your site. Yeah. Did and you so use does TNA? TNA actually has polls on their own website. Yes. But in order to vote for this one, you need to go to PollDaddy.com. Why? I don't know. Someone actually told me it was approximately $2,000 a year to use PollDaddy.com. Excellent. I can't believe that's possible. But this is TNA, so I assume it must be true. All right, let's look at this top ten. Yeah, see, on the main TNA website, right down here on the front page, there's a fucking poll. Favorite match from the May 3rd Impact. Let's see what the results are, actually. Everyone's favorite match was RVD versus Desmond Wolf. <laughs> what a shocker. Desmond won again. Number of voters, 3,015. Woo! Let's go to... Uh, Let's go to this thing right here, the new TNA Top 10 Rankings. All right. I'm going to vote. Oh, I can't vote again. Oh, my God, they may have fixed it. <laughs> After all this time they fixed it, you cannot stuff the ballot box. You know what this wow. means? Wow. Do you know what this means? Huh. They learned a lesson. They did. For the first time ever. Matt Morgan is now in the lead. What? Yeah. Matt Morgan is in the lead with 12,000 votes. Surely this is rigged. Well, I think that they were they were stuffing the ballot box and they fixed it, hmm. is what was happening. Who would suffer for Matt Morgan? Who would what? Who would stuff the box for Matt Morgan? The Morgan Army? Hmm. I don't know. I have no better answer. Go on. So Rob beat Desmond Wolf to retain his title. He was immediately laid out by AJ Styles, who demanded a title shot of sacrifice, and then as the former champion was laying out a challenge to the current champion for the pay-per-view, they cut to the back because something more important was going on. And what was more important was that Jeff Jarrett was laying down and he accused Sting of attacking him. More important than the world title. So we had the main event segment of Hulk Hogan calling out Sting. They talked about WWF. They talked about WCW. They... Honestly, I have no idea what they talked about. I don't sure. Sting started talking about how he still loves wrestling and wants to give back to TNA. Said Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan was a chess player. Hogan told him to take his best shot. Jarrett came out, hit Sting, then Hulk cut him off, and then the show ended. I have no idea what the fuck this was. I don't either. I, I was going to see it actually. Well, you and me understand it better than I do. To the back. You know, I just got to say, it's one thing when. I forget stuff that happens on Impact. Because God knows I watch the show once and I review it and I tried the, my best to never think about it again. But when you're the guy writing the show and you forget shit left and right on a show you wrote, bad times. Probably means you're doing too much shit in the shows. Probably means you're an idiot. Or you may just be stupid. You may just or be both. an idiot. Started out with a recap of bunch of stuff that happened 10 days ago. It's a long-ass time. I had no memory of any of this. Yesterday, I swear to God, when we did the Dave show, Dave was upset because he couldn't remember every single match on this show. He was like, when I can't remember every single match on this show off the top of my head, something's wrong. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, I don't remember a single match on this show. I don't remember the main event. I don't remember any of the title matches. I'm not even sure I could name all of the champions right now. Ten days, and Impact has been blocked completely out of my mind for far more important matters. So, they recapped all of this. I mean, there's, there's, the only important thing from this recap that I want you all to keep in mind is that the main event last week was a confrontation between Hulk Hogan, Jeff Jarrett, and Sting. That's right. Just remember that. So, they talked about the poll for the number one contender which they said was at TNAWrestling.com, but in fact it's at PollDaddy.com. And they mentioned that it influenced the matchmaking for the evening, because you see, the fan vote at PollDaddy.com only influences the matchmaking. Which means, you can all stop voting for Desmond Wolf now, because it doesn't matter if he wins. The storyline is that 
It influences the voting, but Dixie, Hulk Hogan, and Eric Bischoff all have the final say. Which means, as we all knew, the poll is complete and utter bullshit. This was the revolutionary ranking system that Eric Bischoff talked about a couple of weeks ago. This is what it has become. They didn't mention a single person on the program. Of course, they didn't mention Desmond Wolf or Matt Morgan, who were in first and second place. They just just blew the whole thing off. So keep voting. It don't matter. It was fun for a week when everybody fucked with it, but now they've they've completely given up, which should come as a surprise to nobody. So Eric came out. He's a baby face. But, of course, he's doing the old heel shtick of, I love each and every one of you. Just totally smarmy. Called out RVD. Talked about the awesome vote. All these people who participated. Who, by the way, got fucked in the end. Said that nobody knew where Jeff was. Nobody was answering the phone. <laughs> that was good. Always good that Jeff Hardy is incommunicado. I've Maybe he was arrested again. Rob said he was enjoying being the champion. And the thing he loved best was defending the title. Proving he was the best. No days off for me, he said. More importantly, he said, and this is a direct quote, I am here to pop ratings for TNA. All right, two things. First yeah. off, no off days for me I thought was much funnier. Because the entire reason he came to TNA is to have 27 off days a month. As many off days as possible. That's funny, too. Second, and this is actually, I, I, this is a honest question. I don't watch a lot of television. I watch wrestling about all I have time for. Is there another television program in the world that spends this much time talking about their own ratings and or begging for ratings? Please tell me if there's such a show. Because there, I don't think there's a single one. The only thing I can think of would be people like Letterman who is burying his own ratings at times. I see. People will, people will take shots at their own ratings like that. But uh, no. No one else ever talks about it. But... I think it's funny because I believe the 0.5 show they got, the rating to be popped, that was either the show where he won the belt or, even worse, the week after. I think it was the week after. So after his title win, he popped it down. He popped it down to the lowest rating in the history of Spike Television with DNA. Yes. So Good one. He is not popping ratings. No. So AJ came out. Said RVD needed to watch his mouth. There were children present. I don't even know what he said that AJ was so offended Called about. himself the whole effing show. Oh, I see. You can't say effing? The AJ. letter F is banned? <laughs> Sesame Street's got some problems then. So, said RVD needed to be a role model for the kids. Don't hold your breath, by the way. Wait for that one. And he wanted to wrestle him, which is interesting. You know, well, he'll, he, he, he'll he, begging for a match. He did address... That it was strange he would want a match three days before his title match. But he said he wanted to break RVD's legs. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. I was fine with that. So, Jeff came out, and presumably he returned nobody's phone calls except the music guys. Because his music was all queued up and ready to go. He came out, and he said he was still not used to an 8 p.m. call time. And he could not remember, not remember what day the show was on. Swear I'm not to God. Swear to God he said this. He's <laughs> incompetent. And Tuesday or Thursday, Monday, I don't know, this 8 o'clock call time. He said he did not have a secretary, and so there was no one to help him keep track of what day he worked. Relax, for fuck's sake. This show's stupid. It's I, not worth screaming about. I'm gonna, I may do a lot of screaming. So, yes, he didn't know when the show was, didn't know what day it was. It probably happens a lot to Jeff Hardy. Somehow this ended up with a three-way. Yeah. With of uh, Eric put the three away between RVD and Jeff and AJ. Mm -hmm. Everyone was happy except AJ, who was pissed because now he would not be able to break Rob's legs. A singles match on the pay per view, but the three way is free on television. I, I don't know and I don't care. So the people we will interview, Madison plugged the loser leaves town match at the pay per view. Said she was going to prove she was the rightful champ. She said she had to prove she deserved the title, which is true. And then she has still never won a singles match. It's a direct quote from my report. Then some shit happened. I don't know what it was. Lacey had to pee, I guess. This sucked. Is, yes, Lacey had to pee and ran off in the middle of the promo. Now, I don't know if this is good, but the amazing thing is her having to pee, in fact, set something up by the end of the show. Mm -hmm. Astounding. 
We had Taylor Wild. I can't even call it wrestling. <laughs> Taylor Wild and Terror were in the ring. This was shit. It's very bad from start to finish. Yeah. This was unconscionably bad. <laughs> Terra ended up winning with what was supposed to be a kick to the ribs. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened, everyone. First off, they announced that it was Abyss versus Desmond at the pay-per-view in a ring versus Chelsea match. If Abyss wins, he gets Chelsea for 30 days, presumably to just fuck repeatedly. And if Desmond wins, then he gets Abyss's ring. Why Desmond Wolf would want Abyss's ring, I have absolutely no idea. Because except Chelsea, they, it would make Abyss sad. Oh, that's right. Chelsea won Chelsea the ring. Chelsea has said she won. You have forgotten everything. Why would Chelsea... Listen, I've heard that women like rings, okay? They don't like WWE Hall of Fame rings. <laughs> they just don't, okay? Oh, God. What kind of people are writing this show? So anyway, that's the match. And they had this battle in the ring. And Taylor went up top for a high cross. And Tara put her foot in... I can't even call it a kick. She just put her foot in her She guts. held her foot out, and Tara jumped into it. And then she pinned her. So then Serena hit the ring to make a save, and the fans were chanting for Tara as she went up the ramp. Keep in mind that, unless it is a swerve, which actually I strongly suspect, because I don't trust these people as far as I can throw them, unless it's a swerve and Tara has re-signed and she's staying with the company, she's leaving on Sunday, and she just beat Taylor Wilde. Keep that in mind. Yes. Keep that in mind. Make a note. All right, I'm going to read my notes on the next segment here verbatim. It's one sentence. A bunch of people, I have no idea who they are, are screaming backstage. I'll read mine. They cut backstage and everyone was screaming. In the middle of it, Desmond was shoving people away and Chelsea was crying. Then they cut away. I hate this show. (laughs) That's maybe better. It was uh, for the first... I guess 80%. There's only like seven seconds. But I didn't recognize any of these people. I thought perhaps we were watching a different program. <laughs> and then by the end, I was like, wait, I think that's Desmond and, Desmond, and that might be Chelsea. And then it ended. There's a thing they love to do on this program, which... Uh, Make shitty television? <laughs> well, no. What, what they do is, like, they will they will show a scene of chaos. And they won't tell you what's going on. They will give you no clues. And I guess they figure that you'll be so intrigued that you will keep watching to find out what happened. Now, you would think, after getting horrendous ratings for all these years, they'd learn that this doesn't work. No, you wouldn't. But they I would never think that. doing it. I would never think they would learn. So, after commercial, Christy had an update. This was the best update, and she's had some good ones. She said, Chelsea was alleging to police, that she'd been attacked, quote, a few minutes ago, in, quote, an undisclosed location. (laughs) An undisclosed location a few minutes ago. So it could have been anywhere in Florida. Well, no, it was a few minutes ago. No, I understand. So we can rule out China, (laughs) Russia, probably even Tampa, Rule out anything outside the building. Most likely it was somewhere in the impact zone. Why the location was undisclosed, I still don't know. Perhaps Christy read her line wrong? No. I have more faith in her than I do in the people making this show. We had Brian Kendrick and Doug Williams. Doug came out with the X title, said Kendrick didn't deserve a title shot, and so this was a non-title match. It would be nice if... They would explain why TNA management has not forced Doug to relinquish the belt. At least if you go back to, like, Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels, there were two Intercontinental belts. Like, Shawn had whatever happened to him, and he went home, and Razor won the belts, and then Shawn came back with the original belt, you know? No, you're, you're, you're right. Instead, I, I, it's I, like, okay, so, so they stripped him of the title, because he was overseas due to a volcano. Mm-hmm. But then when he came back to the country and he held onto the belt and wouldn't give it back. No one cared. 
No, they don't care at all. Instead, they made a match where he could win it. <laughs> yeah, you go just go ahead and hold on to it till the pay per view. You dudes have a match, and if you win, just hold on to it. If not, then you really have to get back. So yes, though, this time he's having a match for the belt of the pay per view. So the finish of this was Kazarian, I guess, teased going for the belt. Mm-hmm. Did he ever touch it? No. But he just got on the ramp. But this distracted Williams, who grabbed the belt, and then Kendrick schoolboyed him and pinned him. Yes. yes. The title match on the pay per view was set up by having a guy not on the pay per view pin the challenger, who yes. has the belt and the champion doesn't. So is it a three weight the pay per view? Well, let's look at the card here. Where is it? X Division title. Nope. Doug Williams versus Kazarian. And so I ask again, what was the point of this? Well, maybe they'll add him on Sunday. Maybe. I wouldn't put that back. Perhaps him. Williams is going to win, and then Kendrick will challenge him. Doubtful. I know. Kendrick has lost about 30 pounds in he the is, last month. He is small. I don't know what happened to him. First he was too fat, and then he got too skinny. Well, Amazing how this happens. Maybe maybe Tyson Tomko stole his food. Could, could very well could have been. Or Paul London, in fact. <laughs> or just, well. So, it was immediately to the back, and Christy was trying to get word from Simon, Simon Diamond. Diamond may have stolen his food, actually, now think about it. About what was going on, and he said, I'm not at liberty to say what happened, but you won't believe what I just heard. What a tease. I don't even care. What a tease. <laughs> he teased Christy, as opposed to vice versa for once. Yeah, and, and she had an expression on her face, is all I can say. Mm-hmm. She... She got this news, and she turned away from Simon Diamond, but not into the camera. Actually, if you remember the picture we had on the front page of Christie's boobs that became quite the deal on the board, mm-hmm. exact same look on her face. I will have to take your word for it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Then we had just the segment of a lifetime. Matt Morgan and himself came out to face Generation Me. Matt, you'll recall, is a heel. So he stormed to the ring... He took on both these men, one on two, all by himself. People were cheering him. <laughs> they were chanting Morgan. This was exactly the kind of thing someone like Goldberg would have done. Sure. Gee, I wonder, I wonder if Russo just sat back there and went, hmm, why are they cheering Matt Morgan? I don't get it. I suspect he does not. He's not aware that it makes his show look stupid. So he laid them both out. He grabbed the mic. He said he'd warn Hogan that if he didn't tell him who his partner was going to be at the pay per view, there was going to be bloodshed. He was about to boot one of the Bucks' heads into the post when Samoa Joe ran out, beat the shit out of him, laid him out with the muscle buster, and bailed. So Matt Morgan's laying dead in the ring. Wolfpack music hits. Out came Hall, Nash, and Eric Young. Mike Tanay said something along the lines of, Remember a few months back at that one pay-per-view where Kevin Nash was in Feast or Fire to win a tag title shot? The answer is no. Well, if you had quizzed me, which wrestler on the TNA roster won a tag team title shot and refused to fire three months ago? I would have had to list them in alphabetical order. <laughs> I never would have remembered Kevin Nash. No one remembered until like two days before the show. And then when they did remember, they decided they had to do something about it. So this is what we got, everybody. Nash found his briefcase hidden somewhere in his house. He brought it to the show. He opened it up. Tag title shot. He pinned Matt Morgan. One, two, three. The Outsiders are the tag team champions in 2010. As noted, like, when this happened... A week ago. Admin Tony sent me a text that just said, Hall and Nash are a tag team in 2010. And I responded, they're the champions. And he responded, N-O, about 17 exclamation points. Yes. And then he this did not watch. This is why people think this show is so stupid. Now, I'm going to ask a question, and I know there is no good answer, but I feel the need to ask anyway. Yes. When you say teenagers remembered they had this tag title shot lying around, and so they had to do something about it, why did they have to do something about it? Because they remembered. Okay. That's, honestly, that's a better reason than I could think of. This so. was not supposed to be what happened here. <laughs> it was supposed to be Matt Morgan and a partner against Ink Ink. Now it's the Outsiders versus Ink Ink. That's going to suck. All and Nash oh, against Shannon Moore and Jesse Neal. I swear to God that's the match. So speaking of Ink Ink, they had a conversation backstage that was poorly mic'd and I could not hear. Yeah. We'll get, get to that in a minute. Get used to it. Machine Guns versus Ink Ink versus Beer Money. Actually, let me just read my notes here because I don't know what was happening. 
Machine Guns versus Slash, Ink Ink, Shannon Moore and Jesse Neal versus Beer Monday versus Team 3D in a random four way for no reason. It's exactly what I wrote, everybody. Hopefully, my editor catches that. Everyone, he is a professional. Do not try this at home. So, anyway, this was a pretty goddamn fun match, actually. Sure. It may have been longer than every match on Raw put together. They also did a great finish where Jesse Neal pinned Bubba Ray clean, which is the right finish to set up the tag title shot of the pay-per-view. The only thing I hated about this match is I think Team 3D are heels. And I think Jesse Neal and Shannon Moore are baby faces. Pretty sure. Not, not sold on this yet. But Team 3D hits Jesse Neal with a doomsday device. Okay? One of the most feared finishers in tag team history. Of course, that's not the finish. But then Team 3D was setting up for something else on someone else, and Jesse Neal broke it up. And so they began yelling and shouting at him for having the temerity to break up their move like they were still all teammates. I have no idea what you're, happened. You're, it, you're correct. I am willing to overlook it because, A, this was a very fun match. B, it accomplished what it needed in, in, in when the crowd went crazy from this, Jesse when he got his hot tag, and then when he hit Bubba with a spear and pinned him, so it worked. And C, there was so much other stupid shit on this show. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Ric Flair had a sit-down interview, and Dave just ripped it apart. He was appalled because he said it never should have aired on TV, Ric Flair looked so old, and people on the board, there were a lot of people on the board that freaked out, that thought, you know, what's Dave talking about? It wasn't that bad. It was fine. Well, wait till he sees this show. (laughs) Ric Flair, I realize I am prone to exaggeration. Everyone who's listening to the show for more than 10 minutes is aware, but I promise you, I swear to God, I am not exaggerating when I tell you this guy looked 85 years old. Am I lying, Vince? He literally looked like, he looked older than Freddie Blassie. You are lying. He looks much older than an 85-year-old person. I had dinner today with a group of 80-year-old people. They all looked better than Flair. Oh, my. He looked like... This was the oldest I've ever seen him look by decades. He looked like a, a, a piece of, a, part of the bodies exhibit making his way around the country. <laughs> He looked like a mummy. I could not... Now, granted, Dave was right in the sense that he looked really old in that last one, and they should not have put it on TV. He looked... He may have looked a million years old. I was thinking with my claim that he was part of the fossil record. This was... What in God's (laughs) name? And worse, worse... Okay, listen. I understand that later on in the show, they had... Peeping Tom footage of two guys in the fucking bathroom, bad acoustics, and they had to put subtitles up on the screen. Okay? Fine. I know that later on in the show they had cell phone footage of something happening in a bathroom with poor acoustics. They had to have subtitles. Fine. This was an interview with a camera right in front of Ric Flair, Mm -hmm. and they needed subtitles. Yes. That made him seem even older. Yes. He's so old his dentures have fallen out. (laughs) The, the, the termites have eaten his wooden teeth. Oh, my God. This was just a disaster. This is an extreme example of putting the emphasis on your talent's weaknesses. I'll say. Yes. So, as you noted, the next segment was... The oh, wait. Hold on. There's oh, more. There's more. I thought you were done with Mr. Flynn. No. This, this was what pissed me off. I, this may be nitpicking. I'm not sure. But... It's hard to tell anymore. He said something about how everyone knows I'm retired from the ring. Did he? Yes. Has he wrestled twice this year? Did I not? Did in fact, it would be one thing if Ric Flair had just wrestled twice this year. Okay, he wrestled a couple of weeks ago. He also wrestled on the most watched Impact of all time. I don't know. I don't know. So we had our peeping Tom. He was hiding. I swear to God, <laughs> yes. hiding in the bathroom. Recording Jeff Hardy putting on his makeup. He was shooting this from maybe behind window blinds or something. He may have been in a bathroom stall. He may have been filming them urinate. Could could be. So uh, Rob Van Dam walked in. He and Jeff had a discussion. <laughs> we could not hear most of it. No. 
They put up subtitles. This this show sucks so bad. It's, and it's not even like they've got like large subtitles on the bottom of the screen. No, you had to squint and focus. They compress them into this tiny box in the lower left hand corner of the screen. They can't do subtitles correctly. No. And the best part was the subtitles were even more inexplicable <laughs> than their usual banter. When you actually read the subtitles, you realized these two men are not Numbskulls. Yes. Numbskulls. The gist of what they said. Rob and I'm glad Jeff- you figured it out, because I have no idea what they were talking <laughs> oh, about. Oh, boy, did I figure it out. The gist of this was they agreed to go out there and give it their all, and Rob said, we're going to break AJ. Break him. Break him. So the point of this was, the baby face is conspiring with his friend <laughs> to cripple the heel challenger two-on-one. Yeah. That was the gist of this promo. <laughs> Secretly recorded by two men in the bathroom. Yes. Oh, my God. So they build Rob Terry versus Abyss. Okay, here is where I lost my damn mind. <laughs> Rob Terry versus Abyss. This is what they said. They said Rob Ab- Terry, yes. if he is successful tonight against... Uh, if he is successful against Abyss, then he will face Orlando Jordan at the pay-per-view. Yeah. Abyss, the... Gatekeeper. S- the gatekeeper. <laughs> the guy who, like, last week, I believe was the second from the top baby face, is now the guy Rob Terry has to beat to get to Orlando. He has to go through Abyss to get to Orlando. Abyss is a tune-up for well, Orlando I felt Jordan. like I went through an Abyss to get to Orlando. Orlando is an Abyss. Yes. But that is different. So, this led to Abyss being arrested. I believe he had a... At least he had a new red sweatshirt. I don't know if he had all new Let gear. Let me talk about this arrest. But he debuted his new gear in this segment. They cut backstage and they're arresting... Abyss, and first he's ranting and raving about how he didn't do it, and then moments later he's asking what he did. (laughs) Interesting. Poor poor alibi. (laughs) So, I should note, and this is a very important key that you can all rewind to check out on your own, is the Lord Jesus is my witness. He was not even handcuffed. Well, there were handcuffs there. He put his hands behind his back... And he gripped the handcuffs in his hand. Yes. Apparently, they lost the key. They could not open the handcuffs until they said, hey, just hold on to these. So he put his hands behind his back, and he politely held on to the handcuffs in his hands. And he proceeded to turn his back to the camera several times, making it clear he was holding on to handcuffs. So... Desmond oh, ran in, he attacked him, he was carted away, people well, were no. screaming. No, no, no. You're, what they did to Desmond was far weaker than carting him away. Abyss was handcuffed in storyline, being put into a police car when Desmond came running out of nowhere and attacked him. And the response was, two security guards pushed him away, and one of the policemen struck I, I guess it was a karate stance, and pulled out a billy club and waved it over his head. Yes. That was their response to this man attacking a guy being arrested. People screamed. Hogan showed up. Hogan showed up. Abyss okay. begged him to call Dixie. Hogan unmasked him. Yeah, so Abyss was very concerned about the police taking off his mask, so Hogan pulled the hood of the sweatshirt up over his head, removed the mask, and Abyss said, Thank you, Hulk. And then Abyss climbed into the police car... <laughs> And he turned around, and he pressed his face up against the window. Yes. I swear to God, that's what happened. <laughs> so, okay, this, it gets better. This is not. So okay. they're backstage arresting him, and they cut back to the ring Wait, where... I, I am not done with that segment yet. Oh. First of all, we talked last week about the Orlando Jordan Rob Terry and, and about how uh, I thought perhaps I had seen a Hall of Fame Russell Crap moment I didn't notice anymore because I was just numb to that kind of thing. This right here was a Hall of Fame Russell Crap moment. This was so awful. All I could think of was the entire thing was there's a show called Cops. <laughs> it's been around for, I think it was in high school when it came out. Anyone who's ever seen that show, which is most people, certainly more people have never seen Impact, even would, I've seen it, would watch this skit on Impact and think, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. And they built their show around it. It's very poorly done. This was amazingly, astoundingly horrible. So they go back to the ring, and Rob Terry is still there. 
thinking maybe Abyss will be <laughs> he released. He stood in the ring with his hands resting on the ropes for like six minutes. So Orlando snuck in and beat him up, gave him a low blow, held on to his package for a bit, went outside, hit him with a pipe. And then he took a playing card that read the wild card. The wild card. And put it on Rob's back. It's not impossible you could actually get this in a deck, but it made me laugh. It just read the wild card. Not Joker or some wacky logo. No, no, just the wild card. So after commercial, Orlando said it was time they cut the foreplay. He said he did what he wanted when he wanted. So he's TNA is Ed and San Antonio. And he asked the people if they wanted him to leave. They said yes. He said, fine, I'm going to issue an open challenge. And whoever doesn't want me here can come take me out. Tomko's gut accepted. They had a match. Orlando is improving in the ring. I will give him that. He was used to be quite horrible on SmackDown back in the day. However, get this. The guy's bisexual. Literally in storyline. So, his finish is a submission. And what is it, mind you? Is it the rear naked choke? Of course not. It's the guillotine. Seriously. Yes. It's not even a very good guillotine, really. You can't figure out rear naked chokes See, Orlando liked, Jordan. Earlier in the match, he hit a backstabber, which I thought was an even better finisher for him. He called it the bear backstabber. Oh, my God. So It's the easiest thing of all. <laughs> Come up with submission for a guy with a bisexual gimmick. The rear naked choke, for fuck's sake. Nope, they come up with a guillotine. Whatever. So, yes, Tomko was very fat, but he can still wrestle. Mass was fine. Guillotine choke was stupid. Hulk Hogan. Let me just read my notes. All right, go for it. Lacey met with Hulk backstage. She gave him something. He looked concerned. Cut away. See, no man. explanation. <laughs> you got more out of that than I did. I just wrote, Hogan and Lacey have an incomprehensible meeting. <laughs> Apparently she delivered a, a tape to him, and I was thinking, perhaps it's Jeff Hardy and RVD pissing in the bathroom. But apparently she'd gone into the other bathroom. So Bischoff, speaking of piss, told that Tara was piss poor, and he told her to get her ass into the ring right now. So we had Tara versus Sarita. Now again, unless this is a swerve and they're working the Internet, which, by the way, I really hope they are, because it would mean that they no. are working the internet for Tara, <laughs> claiming she's quitting the company because she hates working there. I I don't know which of these would be stupider. So anyway, we'll just presume that she's actually leaving on Sunday. What did she do here? Well, she beat Sarita. So she beat Taylor Wilde and yeah. Sarita on the same night. She should have done a gauntlet final match. final show in the she company. She should have done a gauntlet match and just pinned all of them. So the deal was... And this sucked, by the way. Oh, my God. This this was classic Vince Russo booking. He had Sarita beat her up for the entire time. So it was Sarita, a great luchador, trying to play, I guess, Steve Austin. Not her strength. Then the ref tried to pull her off. She was taking a knee brace. So the ref wrapped his hands around her waist and tried to pull her back. And Sarita struck him with a, with a rear elbow. There was no... No way to, to, to misinterpret her intent. She was being grabbed from behind, and she struck her attacker with a rear elbow. Then she acted like it was an accident, and Mike Tanay claimed she was wildly swinging her arms and elbows. It was a lie. And then Tara hit her with a knee brace shot, and the ref turned around, and she got pinned. Not a DQ for attacking the referee. He must also have thought she was just flailing wildly. <laughs> so, RVD, AJ, and Jeff in a three-way. Poor match. To build up the pay-per-view. Oh, my God, yes. Remember this earlier? Bad shit here. Earlier when I said that uh, Rob's plan was to conspire with his buddy to take out the heel challenger? That is exactly what they did. They beat him well, up two-on-one. for about one minute. And, and then, then they turned on Then they started other. breaking up each other's pins. Yeah, this was great. Okay, let me just... Everyone took a turn being kicked in the face. Hold on. So, it's RVD and Jeff teaming up to beat up AJ, which they do for one minute. Then, of course, they get mad at each other because they both want the pin, and they begin fighting. So, then, they've been fighting, mind you. RVD and Jeff Hardy fighting. So, Jeff ends up outside, and who should run down and attack him but Mr. Kennedy? So, who should make the save for Jeff Hardy but, of course, Rob Van Dam? <laughs> They're now buddies again. So, he goes out to save his friend. AJ does a dive on all three. Well, 
He aimed for all three. He managed to only hit Jeff Hardy. I think Jeff caught him with his neck. Yeah. Uh, AJ ended up DDTing RVD on his head, threw him in the ring, feet on the ropes, one, two, three. A complete clusterfuck of a mess. And a- AJ, I, uh, I just want to point this out. You know, you have the three guys outside. He hits a big flip five, and the crowd chants TNA, TNA, and goes crazy for the heel champion. Of course, because, you know. This company doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. So Anderson came out. And uh, Anderson was out there, and Jeff challenged him to a match. It was at this point I wrote a terrible, terrible show and then realized it was not over. Yes. Jeff Hardy's first words. Anderson times two, you circus clown without the makeup. Mm -hmm. Jeff Hardy in TNA is... (sighs) Okay, number one, Jeff's the one with the makeup. You know... So is he the circus clown? There actually were people that thought that the ultimate warrior died... And they replaced him with a new guy because he got off the gas and he came back smaller. Right. No one has theorized that Jeff Hardy died and they got a replacement for TNA. Maybe Jeff Hardy's in prison. This is this is I not the same guy. And it's happened twice, actually. His first run in TNA, he was awful. He went to WWE. He was fantastic. Yes. Now he's gone back to TNA and he's awful again. It's amazing. So he cuts his promo, he challenges him to come out, Anderson comes out, uh, he teases to go into the ring, but then bails, so Hulk Hogan comes out, punches Mr. Anderson, Anderson takes this no, giant bump. He, he First he blocked a punch by Mr. Anderson and then hit a punch. It's That's so, right. It's what Hulk Hogan does with every heel now. Yes. So Anderson bumps, Jeff Hardy and Anderson start brawling, they go to commercial, <laughs> they come back, they're still brawling, Tanae says, Lacey has given Hogan footage of what really happened to Chelsea. She didn't give it to the police. She gave it to Hulk Hogan. Who also did not give it to the police. So, Jeff put Anderson on a table, took off his shirt, gave him a cent on to the table. <laughs> I have no idea where we're supposed to buy the match. No, we have now, now. seen Jeff get his revenge and jump off a high thing. Yeah. What are we looking forward to? I don't even care. I literally do not care. So, they cut backstage, and the mystery footage is cell phone video with more fucking subtitles of... Desmond ripping Chelsea's dress, drenching her with water, setting up a fake attack by Abyss. At that point, they cut back to the announcers. Mike Tanay says, they've been exposed. Their plan has backfired, and I have a feeling they're going to have to pay on Sunday. We'll see you at the pay-per-view. And the show ended. That is how the show went off the air. Now... I'm not in law enforcement. Maybe we should ask Carl Stern. But are there no ramifications for falsely accusing someone of assault and having them arrested on national television? <laughs> you know nothing is going to become of this. Of course. This is not going to be like a, be the show, a suspension anyway. of Desmond Wolf and Chelsea no. or they've got to they're incarcerated. They're both going to be at the pay per view on Sunday. This was the big angle to make us want to pay. Thirty-four ninety-five mm-hmm. to see them wrestle, and it was the go-home segment. It was the most important thing on the show. Apparently, a Desmond Wolf versus this. So I guess he's winning the poll. This had to be in the top ten worst impacts of all time. It was. It did have at least two, the top twenty-five. The, the, the four-way tag was fun. Uh, There's something else that was kind of fun. I forget now. <laughs> she must have been a barn burner. <laughs> it must have been a barrel laugh. There, there was a whole Ooh. lot of bullshit. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I leave you with this question. What happened to Jeff Jarrett and Sting? They were not on the show. No. Neither of them. Not once. Everybody. This show sucks. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, all of you Impact fans out there. You love a horrendous television show. I will speak no more of this show forever. Unfortunately, I will have to watch this fucking pay-per-view on Sunday. Thirty four. Dollars. You guys, well, guys want to know why I raised the price a dollar? Because of these TNA shows. I spent thirty four ninety five to watch this fucking show. And that's not fair to me. Oh. <laughs> that is a punishment. I have never in my life committed a crime. Certainly a crime of the magnitude of having to watch this pay-per-view on Sunday. Nothing I've done in my life. I, I just don't deserve this. I really don't. I just don't deserve this. To the back! Vince and I are going to run down this TNA pay-per-view here, and uh, it's not the worst pay-per-view of all time, but 
Not a good show. There was a good opener. There was a good main event. Jeff Hardy and Mr. Anderson was all right. And there was a string in the middle of this show. <laughs> My God. I guess it would be one thing if it were like a good match alternated with a bad match throughout sure. the show. I'm not even sure if that would be better or worse. All I know is there were three awful matches in a row. And that killed the show. It killed the show for me. I think it killed the show for a lot of fans. The fans weren't really into the show as it is, but... It did not help. Oh, my God. The hour straight of no good wrestling. Wow. <laughs> you know, I mentioned this on, on Observer Live today, and we've talked about it in the past before, but as much as people talk about how much I bury TNA and how I've, I've got to be uh, biased or whatever, the reality is if you go back and... And obviously, we're listening to this right now. You're a subscriber. Go back and read some figure fours from 2005, 2006, 2007. There was a period in there where every single pay-per-view we raved about. Every single TNA pay-per-view, almost without exception, was good. Because back in the day, when Scott Demore was was involved in the booking, what he would do was he would get a piece of paper, and he would make a pay-per-view lineup, and he would say, who on the roster is going to have a good match with somebody else? Novel idea, I know. And he would put together a pay-per-view based on this, a good pay-per-view, and then they would work backwards in the booking, and sure as shit, you'd end up with a good pay-per-view every single time out. Now, they just write a bunch of TV, they change the TV at the building, they put together a bunch of stuff, they come up with some matches, and there's like no care whatsoever about whether a match looks good on paper or not, which was patently obvious on this show. So the pay-per-views are hit and miss, and this was definitely a miss. So let's talk about it a little bit. There was some good stuff on the show, don't get me wrong. Like I said, the opener was good, main event was good. But still, even the main event, the TV match they had, I thought was a lot better than the main event they had on this show. Oh, totally. And, of yeah. course, the TV match we ended up getting for free. But it opened with the Machine Guns, Team 3D, Beer Money, three-way number one contenders match for the belt. They really played up that the Machine Guns had were the best team to have never been world champions in this company. Taz was very surprised to hear they'd never been tag champs. He, well, just, he just assumed everyone had won and lost it a dozen times. Sure. So, they had a good match. Everybody worked well with each other. They got the heat on Saban. Then they got the heat on Shelly, which, of course, led to the opposite guy making a comeback. Uh, first with Saban making a comeback, and then with Shelly making a comeback later. It was all good stuff. And finally, the... I guess beer was spat in the eye of Bubba, and in the gun to a double-team high-cross-style move. Some sort of gimmick, as Taz would say, on Bubba. He had some great lines in the show. For the pin, so they are the new number one contenders. Very good opener. I give it three and a half stars. From reading Dave's report, I think I like this match even better than he did. So, thumbs up for this particular battle right here. I went three and a quarter. It was really good. It was basically like two tag matches in one, because it was 3D getting the heat on the machine guns. Then they made a big comeback, and then Beer Money cut them off, and then they got the heat in the machine guns. So it probably would have been better to just have one big comeback at the end, but they had enough time to do the comeback in the middle, then take it back down, and then work it over to the point where there was still heat for the second comeback. So this was good stuff. Giant thumbs up to all these men. We had a deal backstage. They were talking about the stupid ruse with Chelsea and Desmond Wolf, and they said the police released Abyss shortly after the video came out. And then they said... I swear to God, the police were now investigating Wolf and Chelsea for false accusations. Investigating. A fucking video played on national television of these two planning this entire thing from the start. What more investigation would you need, just out of curiosity? I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, we should ask Carl Stern. We do need to ask. I'm, I am not law, law enforcement. Let's ask a law enforcement uh, professional about this here. But, yeah, this was stupid. Speaking of stupid, Rob Terry and Orlando Jordan for the global title. This match appeared on pay-per-view. Yeah. Jordan was all right early selling for him, and then he got the heat, and the match if ground you want to, call it that. to a halt. Heat implies crowd reaction. Yeah. No one cared about this. He worked over his leg. Not his third leg. There was a rumor that Orlando was going to do something very controversial tonight. I guess it was having a match with Rob Terry. So... It sucked, and then Jordan missed a knee off the top, and Rob Terry, who'd been selling for like five minutes straight, 
just stood up and gave a spine buster one, two, three. Where's the Kevin Nash drop of him saying, LOL, laughing out loud? That's what this was. And then as Terry was limping to the back, Orlando clipped his leg, beat him up on the ramp, and then he put the belt on the ramp and drove yes. Terry's knee into it. Much more violent than just doing it on the ramp itself. The belt on the ramp, more dangerous than just the ramp. I like that he took the time to put the belt on, to- and on top of the ramp, but did not take the time to remove Big Rob's knee pad. I gave this a half star because we had a clean finish. That's exactly what I did. It was... In the end, it was just a b- long, boring match. It's not going to win the worst match of the year or anything. I did like that Big Rob was playing the Ultimate Warrior part, destroying Orlando Jordan for the first few minutes, and then he uh, they got the heat when Big Rob missed a kick, and it ended up with his foot resting on the top rope. Mm-hmm. And he was so clumsy that he could not get it down. Yeah. And Orlando kicked and struck at it for a while. We talked about the agents before, but one agent said, Orlando Jordan and Rob Terry, you've got six... Or maybe probably more than that. Probably seven minutes. Seven or eight minutes, yeah. I didn't time it, but it was way too long. We had Ink Ink meeting with Team 3D. Team 3D was upset that Ink Ink, I guess, thought they were all that. And Bubba was pissed off. It and, was mostly Bubba. Yeah, Devon told him to quit overacting and calm As down. As usual, Devon was fine with the youngsters and Bubba hated them. Yeah. Kazarian and Doug Williams for the global title, which, for those of you that have not been paying attention, at the last pay-per-view... There was a volcano gimmick, as Taz called it. A volcano gimmick. So we called it a volcano gimmick. And and uh, Doug Williams was stuck in the U.K. He was unable to get to America for the pay-per-view. And so they stripped him of the title, and they did a three-way, which was won by Frankie Kazarian. Now, Kazarian was the champion, but the belt was still in the U.K. So, Doug Williams returns from the U.K. with the belt... And nobody in TNA bothers to say you must relinquish this belt to the rightful champion. No. They just let Doug Williams carry it around, and their solution was, let's book a match on the pay-per-view, and the winner gets the physical belt. So they booked the match on the pay-per-view. I gave it three stars. It was a good match. It was not great. Crowd got bored about halfway through. They did some cool stuff. And then Douglas hits the Chaos Theory Suplex for the pin... (laughs) <laughs> wins the title back. Yes. So I'd have to I'd have to look. I'm sure it's happened before, but Kazarian is one of the few champions in history who held the championship for over a month and never touched the physical belt. Yes. I know Dreamer did that in the original ECW, but he was champion for like 15 minutes. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's rare. And it begs the question, you know, we asked a month ago, was it so important to change the title that you cheapen the title itself in the process? The answer is yes. And now they have just switched it back. Yeah. So this, so you have the champion, the same guy you had four weeks ago, but it's stupider. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the match itself, I I call it the most boring three star match of all time. So it was not a bad match, but there was a uh, it was it was it was longer than it needed to be. Kaz did at one point go for what Taz described as I, I believe I tried to transcribe this, the inverted reverse kind of pile driver type thing. Yes. That was Taz's golden moment, I think. Nigel and Chelsea backstage. She was all worried. She said she only went along with this ruse because it was his idea. Her acting would have gotten her laughed out of a high school play. This was fucking awful. Horrendous. So she said, after what they did to Abyss, if he won this match, the terrible things he would do to her. And she said she didn't want the Hall of Fame ring anymore. Call it off. And he said, no, no, no. This is not about you. This is about us. And you and I... We're a thing, and I'm not going to lose you. Desmond Wolf was Lawrence Olivier compared to <laughs> Chelsea in this little segment right here. Just watching this had me cringing and screaming. A terrible, terrible skit. We had Tara versus Madison Rain. This is previewed by the uh, the little the the tail of the tape graphics they do for all the title matches. One of the little notes for this was BP spill gold. Not oil. Mm-hmm. A reference to the beautiful people in BP and the oil spill, which is so stupid, it made us laugh really hard. the most creative thing they've done in years, actually. Yes. Then they had Sadly. a god-awful match. A god-awful match. I actually, believe it or not, I gave it a half a star. No! Yeah, because I thought the last minute of the match was solid. So I could not give this, like, a dud or anything like that. I went that. minus star and three-quarter. <laughs> Very random, the- but... All I know is, argue with that. I, I am, if anyone wants to give this negative stars, you're allowed to do so due to 
literally, anytime a match has the worst of something I've ever seen, yes. you can give it negative stars. And this match had the worst Kiwi roll in the fucking entire history of professional wrestling. I am not exaggerating in the Uh-oh. slightest. The worst Kiwi roll of all time. Now, I will add to that. They led up to the Kiwi roll with a series of horrible, horrible pinning reversals. I thought this was the worst chain wrestling I ever saw. I decided it was the worst chain wrestling in the history of chains. I went to Wikipedia, which says chains were invented 225 B.C. That means there have been chains around for 2,235 years, and never has chain wrestling been done worse than this. I would call it a dodo roll. Is that a better name? We need to steal that extinct? for, for uh, Tulalip Championship Wrestling the next time you and I are in the ring together. I'll just say, Vince, hit me with a Kiwi roll. And I swear to God you could do it better. So, ended up on with... the mats in your garage. Do better right now. Tara hit a Widow's Peak. Madison rolled outside. Tara threw her inside and hit a moonsault. Madison kicked out. Tara went for a second one and missed. And Madison then hit her with her gimmick, as Taz would say, for the pin. Like I said, last minute was fine. Half a star, but... I... Sweet Jesus, Tara cannot retire at this point because you can't go out like that. You just can't. See, I disagree. I don't ever want to see her again. <laughs> well, I don't ever. No, stay away. Go run your pizza shop or your motorcycles or your cars, whatever you're going to do. Do not wrestle anymore. Now, I, I may have been reading too much into this, but they sent up security afterwards to take her backstage. The fans were giving her a standing ovation. They were chanting, thank you, Tara. And security just kind of went out there and made sure she left and... I don't know if they were afraid she was actually going to try something nutty. They may have. It, it, it came off like they really sent security to make sure that she got out of yes. there. Yes. So, yeah. Entirely possible. Also, the whole thing was put together backwards because Tara got the heat on Madison, mm-hmm. the the beloved challenger putting up her career who was screwed out of her title against the uh, pretty girl who everyone hates who has never actually won a match. I guess she has now. Yeah, this was her first ever singles win. Yes. So, Tara, at one point... She hooked a guillotine, and Taz started talking about her MMA skills, and then Madison Rain just got out. Yeah. <laughs> she, she has very poor MMA skills. And then Madison Rain made a big comeback, full of piss and vinegar and fist pumps and the whole nine yards. So the whole thing was poorly put together backwards. It was executed poorly. It sucked. It cost people money. So two horrible matches in a row, which led to Hall, Nash, and Young doing an interview where Eric did a promo saying they were the new free birds and any two of them could defend the titles, which, because this is TNA, led to the two people being Hall and Nash. Yes. We see the promo, Eric also said the TNA roster is full of wannabes and pretenders. And then Kevin Nash, he, was, he put over Ink Ink, and then he said, I have ink on my body older than you two combined. Yeah. His tattoos are older than these men. He said, I'm freaking old. Hall then he proved it. and Nash against Ink Inc. I did, in fact, give a dud rating to. This was horrendous. Scott Hall in particular. Scott Hall. I was going. To, I, I was writing a line about comparing him to grandfathers. And, you know, he, you see, he looks like Scott Hall's grandpa, but most grandfathers are more athletic than this at this point. I, I think they should have brought in Rick Bogner. Just bring in the fake Razor Ramon, because I think he'd be a better Razor Ramon than Scott Hall nowadays. Scott Hall was... Horrible in this match. He was so bad that Nash actually looked like 1995 Diesel. Mm -hmm. Like Nash, in his physical prime, he looked like here. So they had a terrible match. Ref bump. Eric Young came out. Brother Ray ran down. They did a bunch of shit. And finally, Bubba teased hitting Nash, but then hit Jesse instead. Eric put Nash on top. Ref woke up to count the pin. Nobody knew who to cheer or who to boo, so they just didn't care. This fucking was horrible. And the band are still tag team champs. Yeah, Hall and Nash, still tag champs. Master C. 2010. At least one of them wrestle again. Yeah. Oh, my God. Abyss and Desmond, Ring versus Chelsea. This was just... <laughs> this, here's where I will, I will read a section from my notes verbatim. There's a chair out there for Chelsea to sit in. This is boring. Brian left. I did just that go upstairs for the first, for like, while. five minutes of this. Listen. The match itself... It was actually all right, especially uh, compared to the previous three. But the previous three were so bad that you just could not get into this match. And they had a chair out there for Chelsea to sit in. This this was the third of the three awful matches. No. Because it went... You're wrong. There was... uh, Williams and Kazarian. Madison and... Oh, I I actually guess there was a decent match in the middle. I I had Rob Terry Orlando, Madison Tara. I see. Okay. Okay, you're right. Never mind. 
So anyway, they, they had a chair out there for Chelsea to sit in. They wanted her to sit there and, and watch the match, and she didn't want to sit there, but they said, no, you have to. And I thought, why? Why does she have to sit there? So she sat there. They did a match. And finally, she threw brass knucks in for Desmond. He used them on Abyss. Abyss kicked out and hulked up, hit the black hole slam for the pin. And at that point, he went over to Chelsea and he said, or she she was screaming, help me, Desmond. And he told her, basically, I'll see you on Thursday. So I guess the 30 days, he gets Chelsea for 30 days because he won. It doesn't start until Thursday. I don't know. So... Which begs the question, why doesn't she just not show up on Thursday? Don't know. And then they had geeks come out and drag her away, so I don't know if they're like going to put her in jail they're for gonna, four days. They're going to uh, escort her for seven days, for five days, until Thursday. Yeah, are they going to hold on to her in a, in a small room until Thursday and then drag her out for King Kong here? What the fuck are they doing? This made absolutely no sense. And, uh, None of it made any sense. Just a stupid storyline. Abyss and Desmond Wolf probably could have been pretty damn good, but just... It was surrounded by stupid stuff. The the best thing about the chair was they had this chair. It was like a throne, a big, comfy, cushy chair. And it was sitting in the middle of the entrance ramp. So then the heels came out first. I'm thinking to myself, so is Chelsea going to sit in this chair and then the monster abyss is just going to pass her? He did. That's well, exactly no, he, what happened. Uh, no, it's not what happened because as they were about to do that, Abyss came down the ramp and attacked them. Yeah. And she hid and then got in the chair. So what probably happened to her was they set this up. And the wrestlers to themselves realized, wait a minute, if we're out there, Abyss is just going to walk by this girl. That won't work. And they had to figure, amongst themselves, you'd better come out and attack us. Yeah. So, again, TNA is just being stupid. They also, on commentary, were talking about Desmond building up for, and I quote, the dreaded clothesline Desmond is known for, that I don't think he's ever even attempted in TNA. I think he did it in the first Kurt Angle match, but I think that's it. Uh, yes, he... It's he, been a long-ass time. He though. tried his little l- l- lariat here, and uh, it didn't work, and... uh Abyss, frankly, did a horrible Hulk Hogan imitation at the end, and one with the black hole slam. I went star and three quarter. Mr. Anderson did a promo this hyping awesome. up the match with Hardy. Mr. Anderson, he just sucks in every conceivable way now. <laughs> he's supposed to be a heel, and he goes out there and he cuts a promo about how he's a big asshole. All of his fans are assholes. By the time he was done with this promo, the place was going nuts. For Mr. Anderson. They were cheering like crazy, which of course leads to a match with Jeff Hardy where they don't boo Jeff Hardy, but they were way more into Mr. Anderson. They chanted, I'm an asshole. We are assholes. Let's go, asshole. They did I believe not- there was also a major asshole. Yeah, I'm not making any of this up. This is what the fans chanted throughout this entire match. They didn't get into Jeff's stuff at the beginning, they really didn't get into his stuff at the end. Just the promo ruined this match. I gave it two and a half stars. It was, to me, it just showed the difference between the agents and TNA putting together a match and the agents in WWE putting together a match. They had a bunch of near falls at the end. People cared less and less as it went on. Yes. And then the finish was, they're fighting on the top rope. Jeff Hardy and Mr. Anderson fell off, and Hardy landed on him, and then he hit a senton for the pin. It was a goofy finish. And, like I said, two and a half stars. And then... Anderson wanted a handshake. Jeff refused. People booed. I don't know. It's either they're either going to turn Jeff heel or they have no idea what they're doing. Either way, they're idiots. Either way. <laughs> and I don't know. I just I just thought you know Russo's tried to turn heel sting uh, sting heel for so long and it keeps failing. So you may as well try with the next best thing, Jeff Hardy. Mm-hmm. We'll see Monday, but per- perhaps they're turning Mister Anderson babyface. That makes much more sense than heel. Jeff Hardy, but... Uh, I don't know. The, the, there was a point here well, where... we can do that. They should have shook hands. I know. <laughs> okay, just throw that out there. <laughs> I know. There was a point here where they were trading punches, and it was done to set up the crowd chanting boo for one guy and yay for the other, except they just went yay for Jeff, and then yay for Mr. Anderson. Yeah. So that failed. There was also a spot where Jeff went for the senton with uh, Anderson down to the mat, and then Anderson just got to his hands and knees. Yeah. And so Jeff jumped down. So Jeff looked at him for a minute, and then just stepped down and kicked him. I was certain Anderson had just fucked something up. May as well have. But then the finish, Jeff was on his hands, or Anderson was on his hands and knees again, and this time Jeff just came off with the senton and squashed him. So why didn't you do that the first time? Anderson is a worse heel than Randy Orton. Actually, no, Randy Orton's a bad baby face. Anderson is a worse heel. Randy hates it, but he tries. Anderson just doesn't know what he's doing. We had the... 
Sting Jeff Jarrett match, which wasn't even a match. Basically, Sting has a shoulder injury, so they worked a Jeff Jarrett shoulder injury, of course. He came out. Actually, he didn't come out. He, he attacked him backstage. He bloodied him up. He took him down to the ring. Here's where I left. He beat the crap out of him. He hit him with the bat. He supposedly dislocated his shoulder. He kept beating on him. People started to cheer Sting because he was just coming off as a complete ass kicker. And he finally threw him into the ring. They rang the bell. He immediately pinned him. 12 seconds. And after that, he continued the beating until they sent out geeks to put Jeff on a stretcher. Sting calmly waited until he was on the stretcher and on the ramp, at which point he threw him off the stretcher, which got a bunch of cheers. And then uh, Hogan finally came out. Keep in mind, this is like 12 minutes after this horrible beating started. And Sting just stood in the ring, looked at Hogan, smiled, and twirled his bat around. And he came off as just about the coolest badass they've got in the entire company. And he's supposed to be a heel. So, again, they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, I, I left very early in this. I did stick around long enough to see Jeff at least. He at least took the time to find some white paper to bleed on. So he's got that still bit of old school work in him. But I left for a while. It got boring. And I came back right when Jeff was on the gurney and Sting pushed him over and the crowd went ape shit. And I laughed, and I just sat back and observed the rest. So this went on for a long time. They showed replays of the whole thing. They cut the announcers for the reaction shot. Taz and Tanae are the funniest announcing team of all time, as when it comes to facial expression. They mourned for like an hour the doom of Jeff Jarrett, the loss of Sting as a hero. And they cut back to Rob Van Dam and Chrissy Hemme, who are smiling and happy. That's right. They had a good old time. Rob did not give a fuck about what just happened. No. Talked about his titles, how he was the coolest guy around, and now he's going to win his match. He's going to bring in more viewers as champions, so everyone was going to get a kickback. Sure. Christy was fine, too. And way to go, Rob. You're badly failing at your task. Although yeah. I cannot blame Rob. I don't either. RVD and AJ for the title. It took them about five minutes to get to the ring, and then they didn't touch for the first five minutes. And I gave the match three and a half stars. It was a... It was a really good main event. It wasn't a great main event. Their TV match, as noted, was better. Flair was out there, and as soon as I noticed him, they kicked him out, of course. Because the idea is, they don't want Flair overshadowing AJ. Which begs the question, why they're even fucking together. I don't know. So Flair goes to do commentary, and he was awesome. Oh, yeah. Not as a commentator, because he can't do commentary. Instead, he sat there, and he screamed advice at AJ. From the desk. He Hook yelled the leg, he said. Yelled at Earl Hebner. And he was just, they need to have him there for all of AJ's matches just being awesome. In fact, they kept cutting to him, which they need to not do because it's going to get him over. And he'd be ranting and raving, and you'd look to his right, and there's Taz, who is trying so fucking hard not to laugh. So that was the best part of this match. They did some they did some great near falls there at the end, some good near falls. I don't know if I'd go as far as great. The crowd was kind of burned out. See, yeah, they, they, they started slow forever, then the match got really good. And then they just went for too damn long. Yeah. And uh, they, they, they Rob missed a frog splash like, with like 10 minutes to go for the finish. So they were already doing the big stuff with that much time left. And the crowd got burned out. So it was one of those matches where the, it peaked and then gets lower and lower and lower and lower and lower until the finish. So They also did a... It, and there was some stupidity. They did a, uh, one of those multiple cradle spots, which was done in the Tara Madison Rain match. Which, again, begs the question, where are the agents? Yes. If you're going to do the multiple cradles in the main fucking event, why are Madison Rain and Tara doing them when they don't even know how? Don't know. So, so where... the, the AJ missed a springboard 450. Ric Flair was outraged by this. It's seen enough. He slammed down his headphones, which I found more entertaining than the AJ springboard. He began to stomp towards the ring to do whatever. Well, who should come out with but Jay Lethal? Mm-hmm. He had his. He, he had music. It was not the Savage music or Flair's music. It was just generic music. He came out in a suit. They had a stare down. They had a confrontation. Uh, Flair was beating him up. Yeah. In a face to face fair fight, Ric Flair was beating up Jay Lethal until Jay hit a nut shot, a chop, and a figure four. Mm -hmm. This all took like at least a minute of actual TV time, during which we saw none of the two men in the ring having a world championship match. So the figure four was supposed to buy. RVD time to win, which it did, but they ended up on the top rope, and they battled there forever. RVD finally shoved him off. AJ hit his neck on the top rope, fell into the ring. RVD hit the frog splash for the pin. This whole sequence took like a minute and a half, 
And meanwhile, Flair's in the figure four on the ramp the entire time. Waving his arms back and forth. Shouldn't he be bleeding out the mouth or something crazy by this point? the knee. Or his, his legs are broken. Yes. But anyway, uh, RVD won. He retained the title. I don't even know what happened to Flair and Lethal. I guess Lethal just disappeared. RVD celebrated. Show went off the air. And uh, at least at least we got a good main event. There were there were many, many times in the past where we had a Jeff Jarrett main event that involved... 100 ref bumps, a That's guitar, true. and stupidity. So I, I cannot complain about this. I, I, I did not like this as much as you did. I went about three stars, but I, there have been many, many worse TNA pay-per-view main events in the old days. So there you go, folks. Good opener. Pretty good main. Not much in the middle. Thumbs in the middle pointing down. Yeah. I, I can't give it all the way thumbs down because the opening We've the main event too many good. shitty TNA shows to really hate this one. Yeah. We're grading on a scale now, everybody. <laughs> but it was not very good. For those of you that say I'm biased against TNA, I'm grading on a fucking scale here. This was thumbs in the middle. Any other show like this would have been a thumbs down. But grading on the TNA scale, this was thumbs in the middle. So. To the back! Impact opened. There's a, there's a graphic saying they would be introducing the top ten list and a picture of Rob, Rob Van Dam. It's the worst picture of the man I've ever seen, <laughs> and they used to promote him as their champion. Yes. Week after week. We were told there was breaking news that Hulk Hogan and TNA management would be having an announcement about tonight's main event. Yeah. How is this breaking news? Well, the announcement is that there's an announcement <laughs> later. When I turn on the show tonight, I expect to see an announcement of tonight's main event. Anyway. No. Eric came out with Miss Tess Malker. Let me talk about Brooks ass. We didn't see it. Again, yeah. this these people could do nothing right. This is this is the famous Brook from ECW, mm-hmm. the one who had a great ass. Who in an, in one modeling video used the, almost the exact words. Yes, her best feature is her ass, and so week after week they put her in a skirt where you can't see her ass. Well, at least the first week it was in a skirt, but it was a tight skirt. We got a side view. This week. She's in her skirt, and she's been the entire time facing the camera. How about some pants? Some tight ones? Is this that hard to figure out? Apparently. My God. So then it was time for the top ten rankings. Eric said we'd been waiting for them. Okay. News to me! (laughs) He said there was a top ten based on fan polling, based on career one-loss record, and TNA win-loss record. Yes. They made a giant... Enormous deal of how important this was, and the, each guy got his entrance played. He came out on the stage, and he aired a promo video about how great he was. And honestly, as this was, they want to make this important. They did everything they could do to make this important. So except the up. rankings sucked. The actual rankings themselves were no good. Number ten was Samoa Joe. Number nine was Rob Terry. Now, if you add in career win loss records and TNA win loss records. How did he get above Samoa Joe? Don't know. Not to mention the fan poll. Which, by the way, Desmond was number eight. So that tells you how much the fan poll played into this whole thing right here. Seven was the Pope. Bischoff said that Brooke loved him. I was going to say, is there something we don't know here? But the answer, of course, is yes. There's always something we don't know here. So, he was in a sling, by the way. Six was Abyss, which is an odd ranking based on how hard he's pushed every week. Five was Mr. Anderson, for no conceivable reason. <laughs> Literally no reason. Jeff Hardy was number four, which seemed awfully low. AJ was number three. Kurt Angle, who has not been on TV for 30 days, was number two. And number one... Oh, by the way, they played Kurt's music and he never came out. And by the way, we never found out why. He just didn't come out. So, oh, actually, we did find out why. Never mind. I apologize. Yeah, well, it's not a very good reason. So, number one, number one was, of course, Daniel Bryan. No, I'm joking. Although that would have made more sense than Sting, who, Sting. First off, look at Sting's recent performances in TNA, his recent win-loss record, his ranking in the poll online, and the fact that Sting's last major match on impact, he was pinned by Rob Van Dam in 10 seconds. So how that made him the number one contender to the title, I have absolutely no idea. So Sting came out, and he was so happy to be the number one contender that he proceeded to beat up everyone. He beat up Eric Bischoff. He began destroying things with his baseball bat. And Abyss hit the ring. 
Sting laid him out with the baseball bat. Abyss looks like a complete goober. A complete moron. So it gets better. Jeff hit the ring, confiscated the bat. All the other contenders surrounded the ring. Hogan starts lumbering the ringside. I thought they just did on the ramp. No, I think they got around the ring. Maybe mm-hmm. they did. Anyway, the point is, Sting and Jeff got face-to-face. Jeff slapped him. Sting proceeded to beat him up. This is the third, it may, be, it may be more, but this is at least the third TNA show in a row where a babyface has challenged a heel in a fair face-to-face fight, and the heel has kicked his ass. Hmm. Then it gets better. So after Sting beats up Jeff in a fair fight, out comes RVD. He distracts Sting, allowing Jeff to lay him out with a botched twist of fate, two-on-one advantage babyfaces, and then Sting bailed. So, by the way, if you're wondering why in the main event, Sting, who was the heel, not only got dueling chance, but they booed Jeff Hardy, well, now you know. If you're wondering, then you're dumb. Yes. It's patently clear why. If you're wondering, you're probably writing this show. (laughs) Yes. So, yes, it was... I mean, on top of all the stupidity, it was also too much stuff going on at once. I just remember the... the, Because Sting was beating up Eric, and they cut to Hogan in the back... Earlier, by the way, they had shown Hogan and Dixie and two, like, lawyers or something, and they were paying keen attention to this on monitors. Like, they didn't know who was going to be announced when they had put the rankings together themselves. So when Sting went after Eric, you saw Hogan shake his head sternly and start his long, slow, pondering march to the ring. And so Abyss came down. He, it was just him. Sting beat him up, sent him packing. And then he did the face-off with Hardy. And then when RVD came out, they cut to the ramp, and guys like AJ and Desmond, they were all just still standing up on the ramp. So there was a thousand things moving on here, and most of them sucked. And it was amazing how this started with just a simple top ten contenders list, make a big presentation out of it, make everyone see it in person, and it devolved into this. We had Matt Morgan. This is one of those weird hidden camera shots. It went maybe 15 seconds. Matt Morgan was backstage talking to uh, Bischoff and Hulk. Bischoff was convalescing after seeing him beat him up. He went to harass them or something. Hulk told him to beat it, and we never saw him again. And Hulk then declared it was time to take care of Sting. Oh, shit. Yeah. Madison and Roxy women's title. This may have been the best Madison has ever looked. It was a perfectly fine match. Mm -hmm. She got the heat. It was fine. And Roxy cut her off, voodoo drop pin. So, Champion, champions always lose. Champions and top contenders must lose all their matches. Yeah. So, Roxy is, uh, they, they, this is her return in the company. They showed some rather gruesome footage of her breaking her ankle in December. But, uh, she has, she's actually in, like, the best shape she's ever been in, too. She had, like, abs and stuff. We had Chelsea crying about being stuck with Abyss for 30 days, and Desmond said, don't worry about it. Anything Abyss does, you'll have to pay for it. And what about me? I have to fly solo for 30 days. It's a good point. Someone asked Kurt why he didn't come out earlier. He blew him off. Then he came out and did a promo. And he basically said he'd been watching the show the last 30 days. There have been a lot of changes in the last four years. He used to be elite. Now, with RVD, Hardy, Anderson, others, he no longer was. He said he would work for free. What an idiot. said he had no ego, just loved wrestling. He said he'd done everything he possibly could. What was there to do but uh, reinvent himself? He said he was going to start from scratch. He was taking himself out of the top ten. So way to go, top ten rankings. Mm-hmm. The guys don't even care. And Sting, as noted, also beat up Eric when he was ranked number one. So Anyway, he said he was going to start back at the bottom, work his way to the top. We we're going to see some of the best matches of all time. And that was real. Damn real. And that was the end of this. And I don't know what's going on. I do want to say that after he said... You know, when he said he used to be elite, but then they assigned Jeff Hardy and Mr. Anderson, and the list goes on. He was also sure to mention that the other guys, such as AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, had raised their game. So he did not make them just look like a bunch of geeks and WWE castoffs, at least not entirely. We had Christy Hemme interviewing Ric Flair and Beer Money. Ric Flair said Jay Lethal's invitation was an insult and a humiliation, and then he had to go in and interfere in the title match of Sacrifice. He said beer money was TNA's muscle, and he was going on and on when Frankie Kazarian walked in. He wanted to speak to Flair. Beer money said, hell no, but Flair told him it was okay, which caught me off guard. That was that. We had Rob Terry doing a promo about how his knee was injured, but he was still going to work tonight. 
He went out to face Orlando Jordan in a rematch for the global title. No no idea why. Why on earth is this rematch happening? I don't know. Rob Terry hit his finisher and pinned Orlando Jordan clean on the pay-per-view. Maybe Orlando blew someone. All it's right. a gimmick! <laughs> I don't have any better explanation. So, announcers were sitting there talking about what a gutsy performance this was by Rob Terry, which was funny because Rob Terry was beating the shit out of Orlando Jordan during this point. Yes, yes, he's very heroic here, kicking this guy's ass. So finally Orlando cut him off and went to work on him. This sucked. <laughs> this is not as good as the bad match they had in the pay-per-view. And Orlando finally put him in a hole. Earl Hebner stopped the match. I believe Orlando's the new champion. Is he the new champion? Pretty sure he's the new champion. Is he? I don't know. <laughs> you can never tell in TNA. You can never tell. Well, presume he's the new champion You would for think now. so, but you would also think Roxy was the new women's champion. All i got to say is, listen, I don't care that Orlando Jordan is bisexual. It doesn't make any difference to me whatsoever. I'm offended by his push because he sucks. It's... <laughs> Okay. And we mean that metaphorically. I, I realize that he, he he is improved over his days in wherever we saw him the last He was time. much worse when he was on SmackDown. Much worse on SmackDown. But for God's sake, he had a horrendous match with Rob Terry on Sunday. He had a horrendous match with Rob Terry here on Thursday. I don't need to see this guy get a push. If Kurt Angle were bisexual, great! I don't care! He'd have great fucking matches! This guy sucks. It has nothing to do with his gimmick. He just sucks. Get him off my fucking TV. Anyway, we had another, not quite hidden camera, but rough cut or whatever the hell they call it, promos backstage where Jay Lethal was explaining that Ric Flair was taking his, Im- his uh, imitation and impression the wrong way. He meant it as a tribute and whatnot. And Rob Van Dam interrupted and said, you're still looking for a partner? Lethal said, yeah. And Jeff said, well, your partner's RVD. Or Rob said, your partner's RVD. And that was that. And Jay Lethal said, awesome. He did say it was awesome. So we had a Jeff Hardy cutting a promo into a mirror, talking to the camera as he painted his face with a Sharpie. Mm-hmm. Don't do this, kids. He's nutty. Do not apply Sharpie to your eye area. He said he'd always idolize Sting. He always wanted to have a match with him. Never thought it would be like this. I'll say. Ink Ink ran in and started yelling at Team 3D. And Bubba told Jesse that the reason he did what he did at the pay-per-view... I think he attacked him. There was, of course, no replay or anything. Was because he wanted to give him an attitude adjustment. Not seen his finisher. Jesse said, well, maybe you're just jealous. And the fact I got mad, Devon tried to calm him down. It got ugly. Bubba went after Jesse. Devon booted out the young guys, tried to calm Bubba down. Bubba's off his rocker is the moral of the story here. We had lethal and RVD against beer money. Beat up Lethal for a while. Got a tag to RVD. Broke down into a four-way. RVD took out Storm. Lethal put Rude in the figure four. Got the submission. This is actually a really fun match. They did what they could. They didn't have a lot of time. Yeah. But for, what, what they, uh, for the time they had, it was very good. Lethal, uh, thank God Black Machismo appears to be dead. He is just J. Lethal Pro Wrestler, and that is a vast improvement. And then it got great as Ric Flair came out and attacked Jay on the ramp. They brawled for about 30 seconds, back and forth, punches, chops. It was a bad brawl. Flair was horrendous here. (laughs) And they finally brawled backstage, and as soon as they get backstage, they cut back, and also on the ramp is RVD. He had just been watching this the entire time. (laughs) He did not get involved to help his friend or double-team Flair or anything. Or peace. Nothing. He didn't do anything, he just watched. He just watched, they come back to him, he had an uh, expression on his face, looked like, wow, that sucks. So they disappear, Rob is standing there, he looks at the fans, he looks at the fans, and then he starts going around glad-handing people, because <laughs> yeah. he did not give a fuck. <laughs> so he's glad-handing fans, and finally some guy in a sting mask attacks him. He takes off his sting mask, and it's Sting, which actually I thought was kind of funny, and he beat the crap out of RVD, and... uh and left him laying, and that was that. We had another Jeff Hardy promo. He was in the ring this time. He said, nobody knew what was going on in his mind. He repeated he grew up idolizing Sting, but he dared Sting to try and figure him out. He said he would stay, take Sting beyond his wildest imagination. Then he left, and then Mike Tanae told us frantically, there's something going on in the back. Mm-hmm. 
What was going on in the back was a security was coming to get Chelsea, which we had five days' notice was going to happen. Yeah. But it was breaking news today. Abyss came out to claim his prize. Desmond and two goons brought her out. And Abyss said, at pay-per-view Sunday, he had made Desmond his bitch, quote, and tonight I'm taking yours. Very unfriendly. Very mean. So Nigel said, you're taking her over my dead body, and he kicked him in the nuts. People began to chant, Desmond Wolf! Because, of course, it was a face-to-face encounter, and the heel got the better of it. And he ended up breaking a glass bottle over the ring post, and he sliced Abyss's arm open with it here on television. Not a blade job. He took a broken glass bottle and gashed Abyss in the arm, and Abyss needed nearly two dozen stitches. And he was standing there in the corner with his arm legit bleeding open everywhere, Still selling his balls. I just am amazed that TNA is losing a lot of money. They got too many people under contract. They desperately want to cut some people, but Dixie Carter won't cut anyone. Except literally. Well, I mean, think about this. She won't cut people that are making $200 a shot or less. People that very well could actually be losing money. When you when you factor in travel and hotel, mm-hmm. she won't cut these people. But it's totally fine to break a glass bottle over a, a, a the ring post and slice a dude's arm open. Well, that's fine. Don't worry about that. But fuck, Generation Me, we got to keep those guys under contract. It's just not right to cut anybody in this in this questionable economy. I just like that we were watching this with someone who, before this all went down, she was looking at Abyss and said, "What's wrong with this tattoo?" And I explained to her, well, you see, many years ago, he was wrestling in a barbed wire match. Mm-hmm. And he was cut open, cut open by the barbed wire and permanently scarred. And she didn't know what to make of this. <laughs> no! <laughs> and who would? Who would? What did she say? This show is also really stupid. <laughs> some, the, some, some, something like that. She did say this show is dumb and try, compared her to horror movies, that, horror movies that simply try to gross you out. Yeah. The band came out to cut a promo. It was... Kevin Nash and Scott Hall in street clothes, and Eric Young in his hideous drab green gear. And then he talked about how he fit in with them. Liar. Yeah. Much a liar. He also said, look it, about 42 he, times yes, in this promo. I, I used to think that was just that was part of his gimmick. No, he actually uses that word. He yeah. needs a speech therapist to sit down with him and remove that from his vocabulary. Yes. Look it does not exist in, in the U.S. or Canada. No. Stop it. So he told everyone that, uh, he said they were going to tell everyone, they would tell everyone first because they know there's nothing anyone can do about it. It's his exact words. We had Eric Young versus Shannon Moore. The announcer said Eric Young is a different style of competitor from Six Pac. Indeed! Mm-hmm. Here was where the show to me was just seemed to be about four hours long. It had been uh, just a bunch of shit happening I don't care about. So they're having a match, it was fine, and then. Bubba Ray Dudley came out down on the ramp to a brawl with Jesse Neal. So they had two guys fighting on the ramp. You would think that would distract the ref. They also had Kevin Nash and Scott Hall out there to distract the ref. Somehow, none of it worked. The ref still ha- saw Scott Hall hit Shannon with a belt and had to pretend he didn't see it. And then Eric won with a pile driver. These people don't know what they're doing. No. So, Speaking of not knowing what you're doing. Oh, the X Division. The X Division uh, Battle Royal. If you recall, earlier in the show, they made a giant deal about the top ten rankings and how it was based on fan polling and career one-loss record and TNA one-loss record. Well, then Angle pulled himself out of the poll, so they needed a new number ten. So did they go on win-loss record and fan polling? No! They threw a bunch of small guys in the Battle Royal. Yeah. So it was... I thought this was for the number one contender for the X title. I did, too. I was very confused, but that's what they said at the end. Uh... <laughs> The, it was. It went quickly, like four minutes or less. Uh, it was down to Kazarian and Homicide brawling in the ring. The announcers were talking about Brian Kendrick still being involved. I, I swear to God, I had not seen Brian Kendrick on TV up to this point. He ran in and dumped Homicide, and then Kazarian dumped him to win. Ric Flair was out there watching. So Kazarian's number 10 in the rankings, and apparently he's a friend of Ric Flair now. You know, the thing that annoyed me about this match is Mike Tanay. I like Mike Tanay, but he had a line here in this two-minute X Division Battle Royal, which was horrible. And he says, this match is so important, it could be a career maker for someone. 
Would Jim Ross ever lie in such an... You know what I mean? I pay not a million it, dollars. This man is not a career maker for anyone. Yes. Why would you go out there and, and say something like that on television? You you have to have a semblance of credibility. Can you just say this is a, very, this show? This is a very important match for someone here tonight? Can you say something like that? This very well could be a career maker for someone. So no! Just, sure said you have to start somewhere. Sting and Hardy. Rabbit dueling chance. <laughs> Thing is supposed to be the fucking top heel. He's not Jeff Hardy is a top baby face, but no, everybody cheers for both guys. So Jeff made a comeback. Thing went for the Scorpion. Jeff got the ropes. People booed when Jeff Hardy did not submit to the Scorpion. Yes. It's just amazing how little understanding these writers have of professional wrestling. Of human beings. They have no idea how to make heels. They have no idea how to make baby faces. They have no understanding of psychology at all. And so we get these stupid shows. And so we haven't gotten the stupidest part of all this yet. The ref took a bump. Mr. Anderson snuck in. Hit Sting with a death drop. Now, yes, the ref was down. Sting had Jeff Hart in position for the Scorpion death drop. Was about to hit his own finisher when a third party ran in and laid him out unprovoked. Mm-hmm. Now we're supposed to boo him. Mm-hmm. He was totally screwed here. Not only was he totally screwed, but afterwards, what do we have here? Mr. Anderson and Jeff are apparently friends. Sting got fucked. And the number one contender, mind you, just got pinned. Mm -hmm. So Jeff pitched out Anderson. The fans chanted for Anderson. And then Sting beat up both men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. This really happened. I can't even recap this stuff because I have to read it. I, I have to read this stuff verbatim. To try to to recap what happened because my own mind well, I, I will it. not make sense of this stuff. Let me just read this one more time. Mr. Anderson snuck in and hit Sting with a death drop. Ref counted the pin. Mr. Anderson and Jeff are apparently friends now. Sting the heel got fucked. Sting the number one contender also got pinned. Jeff pitched out Anderson afterwards. Fans chanted Anderson. Sting then beat both of them up. What a stupid show. What a dumb, dumb show. What a stupid show. Oh, God. At least they're not titling them anymore. Are the they? title should just be Stupid Show. This show sucks. Show fucking dumb. I should write the headlines for these programs.